If you have to crawl across the finish line, you have to finish it. There's always part of my brain that just won't let me quit. Um, and then knowing, I suppose, that everybody back home um, or out on, the, out on the course are behind me, it's sort of, you can't really quit on them. Uh, um, so I'm Chloe McComb. Um, I'm a paratriathlete in the women's PTVI. Um, I'm a B3, so PTVI means paratriathlon, visually impaired. B3 means I have um, a good bit of vision, so I don't need to do the race blindfolded. Um, so I got into triathlon very much by accident. Um, myself and my twin were um, not very sporty at school. It wasn't until we got to uni that we sort of got into sport. We did rugby and rowing and rugby maybe not the best sport for a visually impaired person to do but uh, we did it anyway. Rowing slightly better because everybody's facing the wrong direction anyway um, but we got really big into rowing, um, continued that after uni and uh, joined the Rowing Ireland para development squad um, and we did that for I think about a year, a year and a half. Um, bumped into a guy Eamon Tilly from Triathlon Ireland who asked us, can you swim, cycle and run? To which we responded, not really. Um, but he assured us that rowing used similar muscles to triathlon and he was sort of like, there's a training day next month in Belfast. I'd love to see you along. Um, and it really started from there, sort of 2018. So, yeah. Um, so growing up, um, we did sort of swimming lessons in primary school and into secondary school um, a little bit. Um, we have enough vision that we were able to ride our own bikes around home, not at any great speed, but we were still able to, I suppose, have that little bit of independence in terms of going out cycling, um, around the footpaths rather than the road, um, and running as well. Um, but it was all sort of very mediocre. Um, so by the time we were sort of invited to that training day, our fitness wasn't overly great in terms of swim, bike, run. Um, I mean, I remember that training day um, vividly well with the swim whereby it wasn't really swimming a length of the pool it was more surviving a length um, so yeah it was it was interesting and it has been an interesting journey especially popping on the back of the tandem as I said we didn't go fast on our bikes at home but we still had that I suppose independence of being able to steer and change gear and use the brakes and then going into just being able to look at someone's back and having no steering or brakes or anything it was challenging <laughs> um it's been a really fun journey um it's been really interesting um really exciting um to sort of do those first few races and be terrified but learn so much through it um up to being able to race internationally um and sort of begin to properly perform on an elite level um it's been difficult, um, I suppose, to try and strike sort of, I suppose, like the work training life balance um, in terms of, you know, having a social life, maybe having a job and training as well. Um, but yeah, I think having a twin sister that does the same thing um, has been really motivating because some days you really don't want to leave the house because it's raining or whatever. Um, Judith will be like, oh, well, I'm going for a run anyway. You're kind of like, oh, well, I kind of have to as well, don't I want to beat her? So yeah, it's been, it's been great. And yeah, having a twin that is on the same level and has the same goals um, is really motivating as well. Yeah, I'd say it's a very supportive relationship we have. Um, it's like motivational. Um, sometimes it does get a little bit competitive, um, but I think both of our coaches are very aware of that sibling rivalry and try to sort of plan our training around that so that doesn't happen. So sort of easy runs are easy runs rather than it turning into a race. Um, and I mean, anytime we've been away at a race, um, the other one's usually cheering on from home. And even if it's, if you know, even if there's a big time difference, um, the other one's always waking up at 4 a.m. to watch the race. Um, and I mean, even if they're not there in person, it's just, really lovely to know that there's somebody cheering you on from home while everybody else is sleeping. <laughs> um, so it was the Belfast Titanic Triathlon um, in 2019, but it was my first time ever swimming tethered. Um, 
in open water across 750 metres and I think I cried my way around the swim. Um, the bike and the run was a lot more enjoyable but the swim was definitely, let's say, character building. <laughs> I sort of knew that I had panicked in the swim and I wanted to come back and do the swim again and not panic. I wanted to get through it and not panic, yeah, just keep it nice and calm and controlled. Um, and also get a bit faster on the bike and on the run. Like, I think I really enjoyed the bike and the run. I think that's sort of the thing that sticks out in my head, that the swim was traumatic, um, but the bike and the run, I absolutely loved it. Um, and I think that's part of it as well. Like, I loved doing it, um, so I wanted to come back for more. Um, well, I'm a Christian, so like my faith is very important to me, so I always try and sort of focus on, on God during it. Um, but also just sort of relying on my guide, knowing that Catherine or Eve or whoever my guide happens to be for that race, they know what they're doing. And even though I might not be able to see the first boy that we're supposedly swimming towards, they can. And I just have to trust them because if I'm fighting against them or panicking, we're getting nowhere. And if I trust them and just follow them, we get out of the water a lot quicker. Um, I suppose before sort of any kind of training partnership starts, it has to start on friendship because you have to essentially be able to trust that person with your life um, because if things go wrong in the swim or the bike or the run, um, you know, you have to trust that they've got you in maybe tight corners on the bike when you're hitting like 40 kilometres an hour um, or in rough waters, you have to trust that they're leading you in the right direction. Um, so I suppose that level of friendship and trust um, really is really, really important um, and then just Having a bit of fun as well, that's always important. Um, being able to motivate each other. Um, it's all well and good, Catherine um, motivating me in the run, but I need to be able to motivate her as well. It works both ways. She's trying just as hard as I am in the race, so yeah. Monday to Friday, um, I'm up and in the swimming pool, um, sort of between six and seven. Um, and then either a bike or a run, um, sometimes a strength session thrown in there as well. but. Yeah, it's all pretty standard, um, sort of swim, bike, run near enough every day and then the weekends are a bit easier. I don't go into swim, I just do a bike or a run. Um, I suppose the highlight of my power triathlon career so far um, is the Commonwealth Games. And Judith as well, because it's not often that we get to race together um, and against each other, so just being on the start line with your, your best friend and I suppose your biggest competitor is always, is always good fun. Um, and just the crowds that day were incredible. Um, a little bit of a torture at times because I couldn't hear what Catherine was saying um, in terms of like directions on the bike and run um, but it was fantastic. <laughs> um, it's always good to to meet people who are following us because sometimes we feel like power triathlon is quite a new sport um, so not a lot of people have heard about it and what it entails so um, we find that if anyone comes up and chats to us and sort of says oh I know who you are it's a little bit weird, but um, yes, it's usually really, really um, encouraging for us just to, just to know that we have your support. It's brilliant. <laughs>